National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, says Nigeria's inflation rate hits 27.3%, as KPMG predicts 30% inflation rate by December 2023. And Senator Adams Oshomole accuses the organized labor of not prioritizing the interest of Nigerian workers. In defense, TUC President Alex Osifu replies federal government. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. Nigeria's annual inflation rate rose to 27.33% in October from 26.72% in the previous month. This was disclosed by the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, in its Consumer Price Index CPI report for, the, for September, released on Tuesday, November 14. The CPI measures the rate of change in prices of goods and services. The latest figure marks the 10th consecutive rise in the country's inflation rate this year. The statistics office said the October 2023 headline inflation rate showed an increase of 0.61 percent point when compared to the September 2023 headline inflation rate. The MBS said on a year-on-year -year basis, the headline inflation rate was 6.24 percent points higher compared to the rate recorded in October 2022, which was 21.09 percent. Joining us live to discuss this topic is Shelgun Shopiton, an economist and Festus Tokumbo, development and macroeconomic analyst from Nottingham Trent University, United Kingdom. Gentlemen, good to have you on Post Politics. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. 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 Shabu, let's, let's start with you. What is your take of the of the ravaging uh, in, inflationary trend? Um, there are no surprises here um, for those of us that are monitoring the markets and are monitoring uh policy government policies over the last uh five months in particular but even beyond the five months uh long before that um the inflationary trend is not a surprise and indeed um, a lot of analysts have said that we should expect inflation to keep 30 percent before the end of the year and this this new report is just in keeping with that expectation so no surprises um in fact if if there is any surprise it's that it hasn't galloped faster than we're seeing. And there are questions about you know, the methodology that we use and um, perhaps the need to revise uh, the components of the CPI, the, the basket, the basket of goods and services that we're using, because it would appear as though um, if we were to revise that, I don't think we've had a revision of the basket um, in over 10, 15 years now. If we were to revise that basket, inflation would be far worse. And you and I can attest to the fact that it doesn't feel as though inflation is 27 percent uh, in the last three months alone if you look at the prices of um, goods and services especially with food inflation you find that prices are changing almost on a weekly basis in some instances um, in some instances they change you know pretty much every month and some are changing multiple times a week so 27.3 percent inflation may very well be understating the reality um so what we find ourselves confronted with is a situation where the disposable income and the purchasing power of Nigerians is being eroded very quickly at a rate that is dangerous because it could get to a point where actual survival, uh, you know, ability to just simply make ends meet and live from day to day can become threatened. And the government really needs to pay attention to this inflation problem because it's galloping and it appears to be galloping out of control. Almost 30% inflation rate, the value of any currency is uh, practically, practically rubbished. 
let's be very honest in ourselves, and it's not only the poor, indeed, everybody in, in such an economy will be in a mess because the value of what the money can, it, it, it will even affect savings negatively. But having said that, what are the factors that we can easily identify as the uh, causes of this, uh, of this unfortunate negative trend? Um, I guess that's for me. So, so yeah, it's still so for you. you. Yeah. At, okay. Thank you. So you you have to look at right now the very immediate and obvious causes for for this situation. The first one that you have to immediately finger and say this is the culprit is the subsidy removal. Um, a lot of analysts would argue that it's a very good policy. It's something that needs to happen because of the uh, damage that the subsidies were doing to the fiscal um, um, structure of the Nigerian government. However, the downside of removing subsidies in an economy where poverty is as prevalent as we have in Nigeria is what we're seeing now, is the fact that everything, especially with us, if you also factor that with the uh, infrastructure deficit, the fact that power is, uh, is, is, is a major, we have a major deficit in power, right? So petrol represents um, a major chunk of the spend of every household and every business in this country. Right, so when you take the subsidies away, what that automatically does is that it has a, an immediate ripple effect and a multiplier on all other prices. So what we're seeing now with, first of all, before the subsidy removal, we had a problem with inflation. But then in the five months in subsidy removal, we've seen a 5%, between a 5 to 6% rise in inflation since May 20, uh, 2023 and now. So that's one. Then when you now couple that, with a, a policy, an exchange rate management policy that sees a, you know, more or less a devaluation of the value of your Naira um, in an economy where almost 18% of our consumption, what we consume as a country is imported, then what you are seeing is, in fact, I think it's understated. I think that inflation is far worse than what we're seeing now. If you combine those two factors, let, let me go then to you discover that. Let me go yeah. to Festus now in, in, in England. Uh, Festus. Thank you for having me on the uh, show. What would be your first shot at... Uh, As uh, my this... colleague have rightly said, I'm not surprised about that the inflation is becoming hyper in Nigeria. Because about, about, about for the past three months, ago, I've published a series of articles in Nigeria. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you well enough. Did you just use the word hyper? Yeah, yeah. The, the inflation is becoming hyper, hyper inflation. Okay. In the past uh, because, months, because I want you to understand that when you mention the word hyper, it speaks to something that is that has gone gaga, something that has gone out of going, mind. I, I mean, it's all the part to hyper. Well, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I mean, it about. I mean, there's no doubt about that. About three months ago, I published a series of articles in Nigeria about the macroeconomic management of uh, under President uh, Tinubu. No, I find high inflation, high interest rate, high exchange rate, and declining uh, consuming, uh, consuming, uh, consuming power are all byproduct of macroeconomic management, and which has not been well managed under President uh, uh, Tinubu. No, the government of President Bari was characterized with uh, multiple exchange or oil theft, and oil subsidy. But despite that, the Nigerian currency was relatively stabilized against the US dollar, and the inflation was being managing relatively, relatively compared to the present administration. Bernard is no is not interested in, I mean. Government is implementing those policies with market-led exchange rate. That will destroy the social economy variables, and it is happening already in Nigeria. So what I'm trying to say is that, uh, coupled with the fact that the government has been borrowing consistently from IMF and World Bank since May, when the, the government came on board, basically for consumption. Those are not sustainable borrowing, because those borrowings come with market conditionalities that weakens your local currency and improve the monetary poverty in the country. Uh, 
Festus Tokumbo, what would you have suggested uh, in view of the policies being implemented by the incumbent government and uh, relative to the fact that what the last government uh, was doing was not quite sustainable and realistic? Yeah, what I'm saying to that is the, removing the policy, removing the subsidy is a good thing, but that policy will be implemented with a fixed exchange rate and not a market led exchange rate. That's where the problem lies from. I mean, the fact is, Nigeria will not generate sufficient US dollar to maintain the currency market. You need to allocate the dollar for basic goods and services that are very crucial to stabilize the consumer price index and stabilize the inflation rate. So you don't implement those poli with policies with, with market-led exchange Again, the government need to engage in sustainable borrowing. The borrowing of President Tinubu in the past six months are not sustainable. A country that is spending over 77% of its internationally generated revenue on debt services should not be borrowing consistently for consumptions. It's not sustainable. And which the, most of the bonds are from the IMF and the World Bank, and those organizations are there to promote dollarization. And the leading cause of poverty in the world today is dollarization. So if you must address poverty, if you must stabilize the macroeconomies, you need to promote policies that de-dollarize. You need to engage in sustainable borrowing. You need to improve internally generated revenue. That is how it works. Okay, let, me go, let me go to Shabu now. Um, your colleague, as, as it is, has lost confidence in the uh, macroeconomic management strategy of uh, the incumbent government. How would you respond to some of the points he's made? I mean, he couldn't have put it any better. I agree with him. Um, if it's possible to have a 1,000% agreement, <laughs> you know, um, because now there, there are two things. Um, two major things, like I said earlier, that has brought us to this point, and that we need, we have to look at these things and do something about them. One is the subsidy removal, and two is our exchange rate management policy, where we have decided to go market based, some sort of fixed, floated um, exchange rate management process. Now, for the subsidies, we've got to recognize that all over the world, and I've said this time and again on as many platforms as I've had the opportunity to speak, that subsidies are a tool for managing economic development and growth, depending on the structure of your economy and um, the, the, the level of relative wealth of your population. In Nigeria, with the level of poverty we have, you cannot free up your economy on the most fundamentally critical um, um, commodities to market forces. You can't free up petrol products to market forces. You will drive people into poverty further. Uh, 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 now, Shabu, of course, we recognize that there is... The, Shabu, yes. I, but have, yeah. you, have you ever... I'm not saying the government is doing it right. Yeah, we need to understand ourselves. But have you ever had... Um, a, a phraseology called energy transition, would a circumstance like this, properly planned, not have helped a very strategic government to articulate energy transition and lead us away, not only from dirty fossil fuel, but to affordable energy, many that are even literally around us. They suck away in front of your house. The gas that we flare and, and pollute our environment. There are so many energy transition opportunities that could have replaced, you know, uh, the, 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 the PMS from which subsidy uh, has been removed. But do you think this government is serious the way it's going about this energy? Uh, transition or energy or alternative energy uh, strategy. Look, God bless you. Now, the point, you know, I personally, by my own um, um, socio-economic um, ideology as a person, I don't believe there's anything wrong with subsidies. I think that we should look in a different direction to solve our fiscal problems. Or let's even grant that subsidies are bad. I, I know, think the I challenge know. we have... I, 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 I know, I know. It's not, as, it's, yes. it's not as if 
Uh, we, we need to understand ourselves very well, and because we are also using this opportunity to educate our viewers. It's, it's not as if President Bola Ahmed Tinubu believes that subsidy is wrong. It's just that the mechanism and the methodology through which subsidy was implemented in the, in, for PMS was such that some people were literally, literally playing, you know, arbitraging on it. And you could see that after subsidy was removed, the, the total percentage that we consume within the borders of Nigeria has reduced dr drastically. I have no, I have no issues with that. You know, I think I can grant that and say, okay, that's fine. Um, if we wanted to take subsidies away, we, we, we should, we could have done it. But like you said, you know, the implementation approach has been faulty. And talking about energy transition, right? What I think should have obviously happened is that we should have given ourselves a timeline, right? Um, that that maybe, for example, say one year because. Energy transition plans actually take time. You cannot transition your energy requirements as an economy within six months. You can't. You, you'll be talking in several years. So if you put a plan in place, you create an implementation pathway, and then you put a subsidy removal policy somewhere in the middle of that pathway, we won't have the chaos that we have now. So that's on the one hand. Then on the second hand is the exchange rate issue. For goodness sake, you have to develop a policy framework, a policy implementation around exchange rates and exchange controls that will ensure and encourage inflow of dollars into your economy before you attempt to free up your, your, your exchange um, rate uh, uh, management mechanisms. If you don't have a source, a steady, confirmed, definite source of supply, and you float your currency, it will float away very quickly out of your control. And that's exactly what we've seen. We've seen, as, uh, we've, we've seen the black market, parallel market hit as high as 1,350 at a point, trending towards 1,400. And we've seen the official rate hit 900 Naira before by virtue of some news management, you know, some, you know, some deals, you know, structured finance deals, we were able to bring that back under control. But because the news has not been backed up by substance, we will revert back to those high exchange rates if the substance does not follow. So, so the policies are not in themselves bad, but they are driving inflation out of control because they are not well implemented. They are not being well managed. Let me, let me go to your colleague now in England. Uh, first, Mr. Kumbo. Thank you. Uh, how would you want to respond or act to or, uh, to some of the points made by Shabu Shaputo? So I totally agree with what uh, Mr. Shenmue has just said. The pop, uh, subsidy removal policy was not well implemented, as we mentioned earlier on. It ought to, if they did remove the subsidy, the government know the actual number of petroleum that were consumed, which dropped by about 20,000, 200,000 to the previous number. The idea thing we have been to allocate dollars for the petroleum importation, because but the, the price of petroleum is very important to stabilize the consumer price index in Nigeria. Very crucial. So allow the market to determine the exchange is not the ideal thing to do. It's not the right things to do. It will, the market will not stabilize. It won't happen. And so I don't I, want to I, comment I, about I, any I transition. To ask, I, need, I need to ask you this specifically. So are you telling me that you would have preferred the sustenance of the absurd five-window five exchange rate that this government came into came into place to meet under President Muhammadu Buhari, where you had about five rate, five exchange rates. What I'm saying, I'm not saying that. Unify the exchange rate is, is a fantastic point, which are, they have exactly. not been able to, they have not been able to achieve flows. that anyway. <laughs> but the method, the methodology that they used to implement it is not is not the right thing to do. They they shouldn't have allowed the market to determine the rate of petroleum prices. People are, because there's no way they, it, I mean, it, it won't, it, it, they won't create price stability. What I'm saying, they, I mean, they shouldn't they have, have allowed the product. market. They shouldn't have allowed the market to determine the price of petroleum products. Yes, and that would still be that. That would then that would still be the continuation of the policy no, of subsidy. No, no, no. Where you where you agree, 
with the market actors on the, the imposition on the price that I want to say before, eh, when you agree on the price based on the, the current, because it's the SN that determines the, the cost of the, the, the petrol price. When you agree on the prices, you provide dollars for the importation. You don't allow them to go to market to fetch it. That was what the Mifele was doing for the, for the past eight years. It was allocating dollars to stabilize the fair prices. But the problem is the military was that there was, there was multiple exchange and they influenced the, 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 I mean, the rate of personal consumption in Nigeria because of, I mean, because many things that were been doing there. But the price was stabilized because it was giving them dollars for the importations. On the case of President Tinubu, fine, he removed the subsidy. We, have, we know the actual figure of what you are consuming. You provide a dollar for the importation. That will stabilize the petroleum prices. And you thought about uh, energy transition. Recently, I, I studied the Nigerian National Knowledge Collection to Climate Change, and I discovered that those programs may leave millions of Nigeria to experience energy poverty in their lifetime because Nigeria, a low income countries that are very low in human development index, should not be proposing to achieve about 40% decarbonization in seven years, in 2030. And that's what they are projecting. And it also, they were uh, but, planning. But, but candidate, but candidate Bola Ahmed Tinumbu actually told uh, pressmen and the world that he was not willingly buying into uh, the decarbonization. They should not buy into it. And uh, Nigeria should pursue, pursue energy transition with natural gas. They should, I mean, I mean, no, the, from the Western government, for Western for the institution, they want us to pursue it through, through solar, but that will be capital intensive. Uh, fortunately, want... fortunately you, are, you are in Europe, you are in the United Kingdom. You could see that, you know, uh, uh, immediately the Russian uh, invasion of U U Ukraine, when it happened and they suspended uh, consumption of gas from Russia uh, in the EU, they what they've been preaching at us to stop doing they reverted to the they started using coal again of course they started no, as a matter of fact in uk over 74 percent of energy sources are from are from coal that I mean, only about 24 percent are from the renewable energies that is how across all the developed countries uh Shabu. yes i mean it doesn't make any economic sense they don't have the Economic ability, they do have ability to, to do that. To do that, and and that is why we need strong government. We need government that are very independent of the Western policy recommendation and influence. That is what we need to okay. develop your economy. Okay, uh, let me let me go to a man that is based in Nigeria. You, I, I, I know the inflationary trend there too is not uh, the the slow this thing it used to be but it's getting better now. But uh, the man who is literally living in the very hot, uh, hot market. Uh, Shagun, what specifically would you want to recommend to a serious-minded policy uh, advisor or strategist of the government at this juncture? We need to be talking to solutions too, after having yeah. painted uh, the the gory picture, the pictures are bad. Reality is that things are scorching, but it will take people of ideas like us too to get us out of out of the mess we are in. Okay, so there are two. There are quite a number of um, um, angles that we can approach the solution question from. Um, the first thing is what not to do. And please, I thank you very much for giving me this platform to say this. Um, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN Governor, Mr. Yemi Kadoso, please, I beg you in the name of God. This inflation is not something you can control by monetary policy instruments. It's not. So you do not. The, the CBN has to stop increasing monetary policy rates, the NPR. So the next NPC meeting that is going to take place, they must maintain either a hold position or in fact, a losing position. So it's either we are going to reduce the interest rate or we hold it at where it is. Uh, and if we not, continue uh, to and try you're to... Not, and you're not afraid that it could trigger what uh, the kind of comeuppance that Erdogan, that Erdogan uh, caused the Turkish, uh, the Turkey economy 
as a result of moving against the orthodox the orthodox position of economics like yourself look the the, the realities first of all our realities in nigeria are totally and very different from what we have in other other economies around the world including turkey uh, we have our peculiar problems you know that they are not contending with but i think the point is very simple um, what is driving our inflation rate is not the simple textbook definition of inflation of too much money pursuing too few goods. And then when you say too much money is pursuing too few goods, then you restrict the money, contain money supply, and inflation will come down. This is textbook solution. It, is, it hasn't been working, and it won't work. Because what is happening with our inflation is cost push. It's the fact that we have devalued our currency, and we have removed subsidies. So that's what not to do. Now, in terms of what to do, I would strongly recommend, especially from the exchange rate side, on the subsidy side, there is really nothing much you can do other than to provide a very clear pathway to replacing petrol as a major um, cost component in the Nigerian um, uh, spending uh, uh, basket. But that will take time. In the immediate terms, we need to attack our exchange rates aggressively. And how do we do that? One. We must loosen our exchange controls. We need to make sure that we remove restrictions from the free inward and outward flow of foreign exchange into the country. Capital importation certificates, uh, um, we, um, we, all of the documentary we, requirements we, must be freed up. We, I, I, I really, uh, I, I must thank you. I, I really would have loved this to, to continue. Uh, but Shegu and Tokumbo uh, and Festus, I really have, we really have to go now. Time and the and the dictators behind the scene are really okay. are pulling almost pulling these things out of me. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, being part of the show. Uh, this is where we wrap up this segment. We go on a short break, and when we're back, we we'll continue with the second segment.